What's up guys, my name is Filippo Aka Time Fluids and I'm a filmmaker specializing in time lapse and hyperlapse and today I want to teach you how you can do this. You will need drones or crazy long zoom lenses. What you need is a camera, possibly a megapixel one. Here I'm using the 5D SR, a relatively wide angle lens and a long lens. Also a good old sturdy tripod. Now let's pack up and find a nice location. Here we are in the beautiful Bondi Beach. I have the Canon 5D SR with a 16 to 35mm lens. What we are gonna do is we are gonna shoot the sequence with a 16 to 35mm and then shoot the same with a longer lens. In this case I'm using the 100 to 400 and I'll probably shoot sequence at 100 and 1 at 400. Okay, so let's start shooting our first time lapse sequence at 35mm. We'll do, in this case, an interval of uh, two seconds. Now with uh, 100 to 400, let's start shoot a second sequence at 100 mil. And now a 400 mil. And basically you can keep going depending on the lens that you have. By the way, how amazing is the 5 DSR? Better than a telescope. And we are back at the computer where all the magic begins. Okay, let's start importing our time-lapse sequences into After Effects. First sequence. The one shot at 35 millimeters. Then the second sequence shot at 100 millimeters. And the final sequence, I want shot at 400. Now create a new composition with the three row sequences. As you can see, Especially because I shot them with a 5DSR, 50 megapixel, the raw sequences are really big, so more than 8 gigabytes each. I will highly suggest to create some proxy, like a JPEG sequence or a low resolution video file. In this case, I have already made them. And I'm gonna set the proxy. For all three of them. As you can see, the difference is uh, quite big from 8.3 gigabytes to 12 megabytes. That will help us speeding up the process of editing. So what we want to do is to overlap these three row sequences and create a seamless zooming transition through them. How to do that is pretty easy. We just uh, bring uh, the second sequence on top of the first and give a little bit of overlap. And we try to align them as perfectly as possible. So let's lower the opacity a little bit and let's play with the scale and the position. Okay, this looks good enough. 
is bringing back the opacity. As you can see, since we shot it with different lenses, the overall uh, brightness and contrast, the color are a bit different, but we're gonna fix that later. Let's do the same with the third and last sequence. By the way, as you see, the framing is a bit different. At the end, I decided to shoot the sequence again from a bit better position, but it doesn't make any difference. So again, exactly the same. Let's bring the opacity down so we can see what we're doing. And let's align the two sequences. Okay, perfect. Let's bring back the opacity to 100. And now let's fix the problem of uh, different colors and contrast between the three sequences. I would probably like to keep the middle one as a reference. So I'm just gonna adjust the brightness with some curves on the first sequence. Just gonna make it a bit darker. Not too much. Okay. Let's check the second and third one. And maybe just brighten them up. The third one a little bit. Like this. Perfect. We can now apply a mask to the sequences in order to get rid of the square that appears. So let's apply an ellipse mask on it very easily and just feather it out. Let's do the same with the last sequence. Let's apply ellipse mask and add some feather. Now to create the seamless transition, zooming through the three sequences, there are various ways to do it, but the easiest is just to create a new null object and to link all three sequences to the null object. So now we can control just the position and scale of a null object and the three sequences are just linked to it and gonna react the same. Now, since we wanna work uh, with a 1080 output, let's just change the settings of our composition to the proper resolution, 1920 by 1080. As you can see, the 5DSR has so much resolution that is using about just the 20% of the image. So let's set our first keyframe of a null object at the beginning. It's about 22.3%. And then let's set a keyframe at the end of the third sequence, all the way zoomed in. And position the bond they right in the middle. I then like to apply an exponential scale, so we just right click on the two keyframes, keyframe assistant and exponential scale. It will just give a more pleasant uh, look to the zooming. Now we just have to make sure that there are no problems when we switch from one sequence to the other. Let's go and have a look. So in this case is perfect. And then we check between the second and the last sequence. And it's all good. All we have to do now is just to render it out. I know this was a very quick tutorial, but if you have any question, just leave a comment below and I'll answer it. And I'll see you in the next one.